Within just minutes of introducing these bees into their new city, several of them collapsed. No predators, no toxins, just pure biological stress. And this was only day one of our 100-day experiment. While some bees struggled to survive, others immediately began exploring their new city, as if driven by pure instinct. Today, we will attempt something unusual, simulating a miniature bee city and observing how it survives for 100 days. This is the beginning of our experiment. Controlled environment, real conditions, and real honeybees working inside a city designed just for them. What happens next will surprise us. Our bee city is built from modular wooden chambers, connected like urban blocks. Each section includes a brood chamber, a food station, and a ventilation corridor. Everything is scaled to mimic natural hive architecture, allowing the bees to move through it as they would in a real colony. We introduced a small starter colony, one queen, about 500 workers, and a few dozen brood. Over time, we expect the city to grow far beyond this. The first 48 hours were critical as the bees explored the new environment, trying to map structures and understand their new home. But not all adapted. Some workers collapsed from relocation stress while others inspected them, revealing the fragility of this phase. By day three, the hive began organizing itself. Established pathways formed as bees started moving in clear, structured lanes. Bees carried food, water, and wax across the chambers, turning these tiny lanes into a fully functioning transport network. Workers formed coordinated fanning groups to push warm air outward, keeping the chambers stable and preventing overheating. The queen explored slowly, marking surfaces with pheromones. Every step she took helped define the early layout of the colony. Larvae began to develop inside the brood cells. This marked the first signs of growth within our miniature city. Workers fed the larvae a mix of honey and pollen, delivered mouth to mouth, an essential process for early development. Some early workers that couldn't adapt remained motionless. Their bodies signaled the harshness of the new environment. But bees are efficient. Cleaner workers quickly removed the bodies, carrying them toward the waste corridors to keep the hive healthy. By day 10, the storage cells began to fill with honey. The colony was finally building a stable reserve. Organized, hexagonal, and uniform, these honey stores became the city's essential food supply for the days ahead. Because our environment is controlled, pollen is provided through designated feed stations. This ensures the colony receives a steady and reliable source. Worker bees break down the pollen and distribute it throughout the brood chambers, powering early development inside the miniature city. With more bees came more motion. The hive's internal traffic became faster and more dynamic, resembling a miniature living city. Building bees constructed new cells, extending the city both vertically and horizontally. This was the colony's major growth phase. Every wall was formed from micro layers of wax, placed with precision. Cell by cell, the architecture of the city became more complex. The simulated city includes a full day-night cycle. As darkness fell, activity slowed, and the hive shifted into its nighttime rhythm. But the hive never fully slept. Clusters formed for warmth, and small groups continued working through the night. Guard bees monitored every entrance, maintaining constant vigilance. Even inside a controlled environment, their instincts stayed sharp. Even in captivity, their defensive reflexes remained unchanged. Any disturbance triggered an immediate rise in alert posture. With the population passing 8,000 bees, the city entered another expansion phase. The hive had outgrown its earlier layout. New wax districts formed as storage and brood zones doubled, transforming the hive into a larger and more complex city. By day 100, the simulated bee city reached its peak. Over 12,000 bees filled the chambers, pushing the system to its limits. Fully operational and self-regulating, the colony behaved like a complete miniature city, organized, balanced, and thriving.